This week on the show, we have American novelist, television producer, and author of the hit book series Goosebumps, R.L. Stein. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that pain and regrets come from living in the past, not in the present moment. So often we beat ourselves up on what we could have done differently. We think about experiences wishing we could do them over, the way we envision it perfectly in our minds. But the reality is pain and regret come from being stuck in the past and not being immersed in the present moment. This very present moment is filled with unlimited possibilities for us to create new experiences and use the knowledge from the past to live life fully with more knowledge, enthusiasm and wisdom than we had yesterday. We can't go back in time and rewrite the past but we can always change things now and make future opportunities work in our favor. Make it your mission today to quit reliving the past and instead enjoy the boundless possibilities offered in this present moment. In this very moment, you have the power to create whatever it is you truly desire. As Thomas S. Monson quotes, the past is behind, learn from it. The future is ahead, prepare for it. The present is here, live it. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, uh, Bob, what else are you working on? What else can Goosebumps fans expect? 30th anniversary. Yeah, we have a big hardcover Goose, the first hardcover Goosebumps book oh. coming out this summer to celebrate the anniversary. It's called Slappy Beware. Oh, Slappy. And it's not only it's hardcover and it has illustrations, which we've never done before. Oh. And it's the whole origin story of Slappy. I'm, all, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm starting a new series oh, wow. of short story books, books of short stories. And the series is called Stein Tinglers. Wow. Good, good title, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First book comes out this summer. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have American novelist, television producer, and author of the hit book series Goosebumps, R.L. Stein celebrating Goosebumps 30th anniversary and more than 350 million English books sold, Goosebumps remains one of the best-selling children's books of all time. Bob, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Well, a pleasure. Very well. How are you doing? I am doing so good. I am so excited to speak with you today. It's such an honor because I've read your books growing up. I've always been excited. I used to come home really excited to watch Goosebumps. Um, so yeah, this is and, epic. Yeah. It's, it's and you epic. turned out okay? <laughs> I did. I'm yeah. a little bit scared still. <laughs> Thanks a lot, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah, good, good. So let's talk about, before we talk about all your incredible success, let's talk about your passion for storytelling. I know that it started when you found a typewriter at the age of nine um, in your attic and you started writing. So tell us about that. Yeah, I was nine years old. Why did I think it was so interesting? <laughs> I was this weird kid. I'd be in my room typing all day, just typing little joke magazines and typing little stories. And um, I, I don't know why, why did I like it so much? My parents didn't understand it at all. My mother would be outside my door and she'd say, What's wrong with you? Go outside, go outside and play. Stop typing and go outside. And I'd say, it's boring out there. Too boring. Type, 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 type. I don't know why. I just, I, you know, here I am, all these years later, still typing. You know what, I think it was a calling. It was a something, the universe telling you to type. Yeah. <laughs> the universe telling me to scare kids. <laughs> And speaking of scaring kids, I know that you were a fearful kid. I read in an interview that you would ride your bike and you would just drop your bike and run into the garage because you were scared of something, you know, coming I, after you. So I, I was, found it really ironic that, you know, of all people that you were writing horror novels. So, so how did that happen? 
<laughs> no, it came in very handy. I, being, I was a very fearful child. It was a horrible way to be a kid. <laughs> Terrible. But later on, when I started writing this stuff, I could remember and I could remember that feeling of panic I had and I could bring that feeling to the books. So it turned out to be a lucky thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's actually very true because if you're a fearful kid yourself, then you understand the elements of surprise and yeah, that actually is very interesting that you, you were able to kind of relate to, to the viewer and people listening to your books, right? Yeah. I want to talk about one of your first horror novels was Blind Date, way before Fear Street and Goosebumps. So tell us about that book and also what does it take to write such intriguing stories because it's not, I'm sure it's not an easy process. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess it's not, except that's what I do, you know, I write stories. Blind Date was my very first scary novel. Up until then, I'd been, I was funny. I wrote about a hundred, oh, I never planned to be scary. I wrote about a hundred joke books for kids. And I did a humor magazine for ten years for kids called Bananas. And then one day I was having lunch with uh, an editor, my publisher at Scholastic in New York, and she said, I need someone to write a good teen horror novel. You can do it. Go home and write a book called Blind Date. Oh, she gave oh. me the title. I didn't know what she was talking about. What's a teen horror novel? Yeah. And I, you know, I was at that point in my career where you don't say no to anything. Mm. You say, yeah, sure, no problem, no problem. And I ran to the bookstore to see what teen horror novels were. And I bought, I bought books by Lois Duncan and Christopher oh. Pike, and I bought all these other authors so I could see what it was about. And then I wrote Blind Date, and it came out a year later, and it was a number one bestseller. It was a number one bestseller on the Publishers Weekly list. I thought, wait a minute, kid, forget the funny stuff. Kids yeah. like to be scared. I've been scary ever since. <laughs> what does it take to write these kind of books? Because I'm sure that, do these stories just come to you? Do these characters just come to you? Uh, do they just kind of flow on paper? Or is it something that you kind of have to sit there, think about? How, how does it work, the creative process for you? Oh, I work at it. They, they don't just come <laughs> to me. They don't come to me. And you know, I've, I've written maybe 300 books. I know. Nothing, nothing ever came, it just come. And people always ask, well, did you ever dream a good story? Mm. One of the most boring dreams you can imagine. Oh! <laughs> the other night I dreamed I was eating a Snickers bar. Okay. Sounds like a really exciting dream. No, I worked, I, you know, I plan every book. People don't like to hear about this. But um, I do, uh, when I have an idea for a story, um, I plan it all out before I write it. Kids think you just sit down and write a book. But you don't. I do a, maybe a 20-page outline oh, wow, of every wow. book before I write it. Mm -hmm. I outline every chapter as what ha chapter one. This is what happens. Chapter two. How this is how the chapter ends. And I map out the entire book before I start to write. And then, when I sit down to write, I've done all the hard part. I've done all the thinking. I, mm -hmm. I know everything that's going to happen in the book and I can just relax and enjoy the writing. Mm, very nice. Well, I'm glad to know you don't get scary dreams after writing <laughs> such horrific books. Some of them are very scary. <laughs> I wish I had. I wish I had some scary dreams. It might be helpful. They're very boring dreams. I want to talk about the Fear Street uh, trilogy on Netflix. Uh, very scary, by the way. Very scary. I thought, okay, yeah. I, mean, I thought I could watch it by myself and yeah, I had nightmares. <laughs> I, was shocked. I was shocked by those movies. Because, oh, wow. Yeah, they were R-rated. Yeah. I've never had anything R-rated. Even my life isn't R-rated. <laughs> I've never had anything r I couldn't believe it. It was just teenagers being sliced to bits. Yes, it was terrifying. People, people love that. Yeah, yeah, but someone yeah. actually, someone wrote to me and said they weren't gory enough. Oh man, <laughs> they were very gory, but it was actually very thrilling. Other than the gore, it was very thrilling and exciting. And it gave you all the elements that all of your books do, like the intriguing sense of excitement. So I, I did like it other than the gore. <laughs> it did a good job. And yeah. they were, so I'm, you know, I'm pleased with them. And there are 
I'm not allowed to talk about it, of course, but no one's watching, right? <laughs> uh, I, uh, <laughs> there are rumors of uh, three more Fear Street Ooh. movies. Very, very nice. Okay. And yeah. the 30th anniversary of Goosebumps. Uh, Congratulations. 30 years of this. That's why I look like this. 30 <laughs> years of this stuff. Do you believe it? I, no one's more amazed than I am. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing what you've done. How does it feel to, you know, have people from all over the world just recognize your work and be so happy to read your books even now? Listen, I know what I am to you. I'm nostalgia, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, that took a while to get used to. You know, I would do book signings and seven-year-olds would come and 10-year-olds and 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds. I always said, what are you doing here? And they always said, we loved you when we were kids. It, I was nostalgia to them. That took a little while to get used to. Mm. But now I'm, I'm very pleased about it. I mean, how wonderful. Uh, to be one, to be able to scare so many generations. <laughs> That's mm. really fun, right? Yeah. And, uh, it's a wonderful thing. And I get people are so nice to me. Sometimes it's like too nice. People say, I wouldn't be a librarian today if it wasn't wow. for your books, or I wouldn't be a writer. Thank you for getting me through a hard childhood. I get this all the time. It's very touching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and after all of this time and so much success, what does success truly mean to you? The thing I'm most proud of is the millions of kids who've gotten to read on Goosebumps. Mm -hmm. And all the, you know, parents come up to me all still and say, uh, my son never read a book in his life and then he discovered I caught him reading under the covers with a flashlight in the middle of the night reading your book. That's what I'm most proud of. Mm, absolutely. And I have to ask you, who is your favorite Goosebumps character? Well, I, my favorite and least favorite is Slappy the Evil. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite because he's the most popular. Every, it, it's in my contract that every other book has to be about Slappy. Oh. You know, that's him. He was so popular, mainly from the two Goosebumps movies. Mm -hmm. And so he's my favorite character. I love writing him because he's like an insult comedian. He's just <laughs> like, so rude to everyone. I love writing that. But he's also my least favorite character mm. because I have to write every other book about him. I yeah. read 16 books about a dummy that comes to life. It doesn't get any easier to come up with stories. I know, after so many years of writing, do you ever run out of stories or is this, is no, this just like a boundless... <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> no, I mean, oh. I mean, there's so much, Stop. I mean, 30 years of writing is a, such a I long know. time. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you the truth, I don't even think of ideas anymore. I stop because I've done every story a human can write and I just think of titles. Mm -hmm. I try to come up with good titles and then the title leads me to the idea. Like oh. fifth grade zombies. Okay, what that great title? What's 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 the story? And, and I saw that's backwards for most authors. They get the idea first, and later they. But I see every book of mine starts with the title. Mm, very nice. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking about titles and you know books, Goosebumps was turned into a movie, very epic. It was it was huge in the theater. So. How does it feel to see your stories come to life on the big screen and people like Jack Black acting in it? <laughs> well, how <laughs> weird to be a character in a movie, in both movies. Mm -hmm. Jack, Jack Black and I are like twins, right? <laughs> yes. And people mistake us all the time. <laughs> had, oh, what an amazing thing to have Jack Black playing you <laughs> in a film. It was kind of bizarre. He's great. He was wonderful. Uh, we had a great time together. He actually flew into New York to meet me oh, and wow. try to figure out what he was going, how he was going to play me in the movie. Mm -hmm. And we had lunch, and he said, uh, "Bob, he said, what in the script is true about you?" And I said, <laughs> "Not a single thing. <laughs> Nothing true about me." And he said, "Okay, I'm going to play a sinister version of you." Oh, that's that's what he did. We had a great time. Very nice. And Bob, if you can name three things that has made you successful, because you have been one of the most epic writers, really of all time, I would say, um, especially for so many generations, including mine. If you can name three things that have made you successful, what would you say they are? 
Oh man, that's a, I, that's impossible. <laughs> Three things. One at least. <laughs> I, well, I one is keeping at it. Mm. Showing up. Mm. You know, I, I write still write six days a week, mm. and I think that's the most important part. You know, a lot of writers like to have written, but I enjoy the actual writing. I like the writing process. I, I think that's that's just keeping at it. I think that's great advice in itself. Is keeping at it, no matter what, no matter the no's along the way. Just keep at it, and you'll be successful, right? Yeah, you have to keep writing. Yeah. My other, one, my other advice, you know, I never give advice to young writers. Never. I don't think they need it. But my only advice is, if you want to be a writer, is to have fun with it. Don't listen to these writers who talk about how hard writing is. Mm -hmm. Always on a writing panel, some author says, writing is so hard, it's so hard. I have to lock my kids in the garage to find time to write. And it's hard. Writing isn't hard at all. And if you go into it with that attitude, it'll be hard for you. But if you go into it and say, how much fun is this? I'm creating a world. I'm creating people. I'm telling stories. If you go into it with that attitude, it'll be much easier. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great advice. And that's that really applies for anything. If you think anything's hard, it's going to be excruciating going through it. Oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. If, if, yeah, I, I think that's great advice. And, you know, I created this platform to inspire, to uplift, to showcase stories like yours, success stories, that anything's possible if you have a dream, a vision, and you work hard. So for any of our viewers watching this, inspired by your work, and maybe going through a hard time, not seeing their goals manifest or seeing results in their life, what would you say to them to uplift and inspire them? I wrote for 20 years and no one noticed. Mm. And I kept at it, 20 years. And when Goosebumps came out 30 years ago, I was already old. That should cheer you up, right? That's, that's actually very inspiring came out yeah wow, so weird. it's not I'm just saying what I'm saying is if you keep at it it's not too late I wasn't really old but fairly <laughs> old <laughs> you're not old you look fantastic by the way <laughs> you're very kind <laughs> you're very kind I think that's actually very great advice and so inspiring in itself is that you know success is not overnight it, it takes for anyone that does anything, it takes them so many years, sometimes 10 years, even 20 years to see success. Oh. And I think that's such great advice that you just keep at it and you know, eventually there will be light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> so I, I think that's great. Uh, Bob, what else are you working on? What else can Goosebumps fans expect? 30th anniversary. Oh, we have a big hardcover goose, the first hardcover Goosebumps book oh. coming out this summer to celebrate the anniversary, it's called Slappy Beware. Oh, Slappy. And it's not only, it's hardcover and it has the illustrations, which we've never done before. Oh. And it's the whole origin story of Slappy. I'm on, I'm, I'm crazy, I'm starting a new series <laughs> oh, wow. of short story books. Books of short stories. And the series is called Stein Tinglers. Wow. Good, good title, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First book comes out this summer. Very exciting. Well, thank you so much, Bob, for being on the show. Again, it is such an honor, a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for making the time to make this happen. I'm so inspired by your work and keep at it because you're doing amazing and you're inspiring people. So please never stop. <laughs> well, they, won't, they won't let me quit. <laughs> yeah, that's good. This that's good. really fun. I really enjoyed talking with you. Thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly high,